Hello, I'm Andrea Anderson. I am the president of the Down Syndrome Association of Hampton Roads. I'm also on the board of the ARC of South Hampton Roads. And I wholeheartedly agree with several of the speakers this morning, particularly Kaja and Mr. Music and Mr. Dodd and all of those from Hope House. Um, the thing I'm concerned about with the plan for transitioning people out of the institutions is that we may be creating a place for someone else to enter. So if there's some way to close the door altogether so that when we get the people out, there's no risk of the people on the waiting list to go in. Uh, with 3,200 people on the urgent wait list, uh, it's, they're just this far away from being institutionalized. I'm thinking of a friend of mine who turned 50 this year. She has Down syndrome, and she lives with her sister-in-law who's in her 60s and has a disability herself. Her mother passed away last year, and her father is 84 years old and has Parkinson's disease. So her sister-in-law is taking care of both her and her father. It's a very critical situation. Um, they don't have help. Uh, she moved here about 10 years ago, and that's when my son was born, and he's about 10 years old, and so they did not get on the lists. And of course, um, their need is greater than mine at the time, it, right now. And I'm hoping that in 10 years, when my son is about 20 and he's ready to graduate, there'll be something in place for him to go to so he can make some choices of his own, so he can live as independently as possible. Um, so the numbers that you've probably heard and know are that 1,500 slots need to go through a year to um, eliminate the wait list. So I hope that happens because I feel like, um, you know, there's not a lot of guarantees for people in my situation. Uh, so in order to keep people from going back in the institution, I think it's critical to have some crisis uh, stabilization in place. Uh, I think adequate respite care is necessary, environmental modifications are necessary, adequate pay for direct support staff and personal care assistance uh, is critical. Um, and I think there needs to be options for individual choice. I really think it's going in the right direction to give an increase to group homes of three or four beds or less, but it is fairly short-sighted in that not all of us want that. We want individual choices. We want the option to keep our loved ones at home. Um, and in order to do, to do that, uh, we can't prioritize um, small group homes. But it is a step in the right direction. I'm also concerned that um, an additional waiver or enhancing the waivers that, ex that exist uh, kind of limit a person to eventually get the ID waiver. My son has the EDCD waiver and it helps us very much right now. But when he's an adult and um, we need more, we won't be considered as urgent because we already have a little bit of services. So that's a concern of mine as well. And thank you for listening, I appreciate it.